very good people uh, I hope you are all doing well so for those who are new to my channel my name is Fred from Kenya I'm a passionate dairy farmer and I created this channel to guide upcoming dairy farmers on dairy farming yeah so today I would like to talk about the factors that affects milk production of a dairy cow so many people are keeping cows but they don't know how have any crew on what they are doing so the first thing that affects the milk production of a cow is genetics so apart from others the main that affect is genetics so we have levels of uh, 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 like let's say genetics when you are inseminating your cow you have to know the genetics of the the sire yeah and you have to know the character traits that you need uh, that you need in your cow yeah so first of all you have to improve breeding you have to improve breeding until you reach pedigree you have to improve the genetics of your cow yeah we have the pedigree we have uh, super pedigree it, it depends but as a starter you start with the foundation and you keep on you keep on until you reach uh, the, uh, the pedigree so the first thing that affects milk production is uh, genetics yeah when you are inseminating your cow you have to choose uh, uh, good genes good character traits yeah so st you start from foundation until you reach pedigree but it did you some years to reach there so the second thing that affects milk production is the uh, uh, the climate yeah condition of the area that you are rearing your animals or you're keeping your animals so you, before you buy or you start dairy farming you have to research uh on the type of the cow that you want to buy and if it fits uh, in the area that you you are rearing so some cows does well in high runs and some cow breeds does well in low runs so you have to choose is uh, the breed type that you are keeping uh, compatible with the location of your of your farm so that's the second thing and you have to buy like we have ulcers we have pressions yeah so you have to do research on uh, your farm and know uh, which type of breed that you can be accommodated in your area so that's the second thing the third thing we have is about uh, feed and fodder and when we talk about feed and fodder what are you feeding your cows yeah you have to ask yourself what are you fe feeding your cows some people don't know how to choose uh, good fodder for their cows and uh, you have to to know which fodder will make a uh, milk production go higher yeah so it's upon you as a farmer you know where are you where are you going wrong yeah which feed are you feeding your cows yeah because we don't feed just like that you have to know which are energy sources which are protein sources and remember dairy cow needs a lot of uh, protein yeah they need a lot of energy for milk production and you have to be very very keen on that we have so many factors but I'll keep on uh, reiterating, I'll keep on uh, advising you to be uh, to, to check these steps that I'm giving you because at the end of it all, they will count whether you like it or not. Yeah, your feeding regime must be uh, consistent, consistent, consistent. Yeah, whether you like it or not, because cows like consistency. Yeah, they like consistency. So watch on that 
So the, that, the, the, the fourth thing that uh, affects milk production is the lactation uh, stage. So we have different types of lactation, yeah? So we have uh, fresh cow, the cow, that is 0 to 70 days, yeah? The milk production there is very high. But as the cow, uh, once uh, you are supposed to, to inseminate after, yeah, those are from uh, 45 to 60 days after calving. Yeah, there after you have inseminated, inseminated your cow, the milk production, the milk level goes down. Yeah, once they go, they go down until the six, uh, the the seventh month. Yeah, so that after seven months there is no milking again. You go to dry. You start steaming up your cow. So lactation stage still affect your uh, milk production. So. You have to take advantage of after calving. You have to take advantage of that after calving. Uh, your cow will have uh, uh, the production of your of, of the milk of your cow will be higher. So take advantage of it. Watch your feeding regime, and uh, it, it it will work well. Another five the five fifth factor that affect uh, your milk production is diseases. Yeah, diseases in cows. You have to know. And you have to detect early if your cow is uh, airing from any disease, yeah. And uh, I keep on telling farmers is the best uh, way to do it is vaccinating. If you hear there is an outbreak of uh, of any disease, you have to in a, uh, not you have to vaccinate your cow. Once you do that, uh, you will not incur uh, losses. You not incur expenses of treating the cow because we always say. Uh, prevention is better than cure. As a, as a dairy farmer, you have to be keen on that. Prevention is better than cure. As a dairy farmer, you have there is no shortcut. Yeah, there is no shortcut whether you like it or not. Because I keep on telling you because I know, and I have seen, uh, so many so many farmers abandoning dairy farming because they say, "Hey, my cow got sick. I can't treat it. The, the expenses." And uh, some veterinary take advantage of that, yeah? They take advantages of your ignorance. So you have to be cautious, you have to know, uh, you have to prevent your cow from any, whether you have outbreak or not, you have to protect your cow, yeah? Yeah. Then uh, we have uh, the sixth factor that affects your cow is uh, your cow comfort and accommodation. Yeah, your cow can comfort and accommodation. So if your cow is not comfortable, whether it is in your dairy shed or in your in the stripping area, all itself is not comfortable because of environment and all that. So you have to be your cow must ha, must uh, be comfortable. Yeah, you must uh, create a good. Uh, let's say even if it is a shed, let your shed be. Uh, comfortable for your cow. Let's have dry bedding. Yeah? Because <coughs> most most cows and healthy cow spend most of their time stripping. So the stripping area must be dry, must be very comfortable, so such that even if you kneel down, you yourself, you kneel down on the stripping area and you don't feel uh, pain on your knees, that's a good bedding. And we have different types of bedding. We have rubber, we have sawdust, we have fine sand, yeah? So depending on the, your capability and your financial capability, you can choose whichever you, you feel comfortable with, yeah? So uh, the, the seventh thing that uh, affects milk production is the age of the cow. Remember, the, the, the heifers, heifers uh, first cow, they, they come down, the first uh, time they cut down, the first uh, that is the first lactation, the milk may be uh, raw production, but as it goes, because I said there may, may be raw production because as a heifer grows, it a need to grow, it a need for maintenance of the body and need for milk production. So uh, as it goes to second and third lactation, so from that lactation you start seeing improvement. Yeah, you start seeing improvement up to seventh lactation, and then the the milk will go down as the cow ages. So it is advisable 
you start with if you are starting a dairy farm you start with uh, a heifer an inca heifer yeah or first lactation cow so lactating cow so that uh, it will give you some some heifers along the way and if you want to grow your uh, your, your your farm it is advisable you 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 be inseminating using sex semen so that uh, it can uh, carve down heifers and the, the farm continues uh, the, the 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 journey continues because i always say this and i'll keep repeating dairy farming is not a destination it is a journey and you have to keep on uh you have to keep on going and never giving up never giving up is not an option so whether you like it or not giving up is not an option so with those and there are others uh, like uh, let's say number we are number seven so number eight we can say water intake yeah are you giving your cow clean fresh water are you cleaning the water trough yeah remember during the cold days uh the cow don't drink so much water and during the sunny days hot days cow uh, drinks a lot of water and remember uh, the highest percentage of milk is water yeah so you have to to give fresh clean water daily yeah and this is not uh, these are must you have to keep on cleaning the water trough daily because as the water stays water is not supposed to last for 36 hours no after 24 hours you have to not even after 24 hours clean as much as you can yeah clean the water trough keep on uh adding fresh clean water so and uh, i can give a tip here uh, when i say you can uh, during the cold days you can even warm the water for the cow there are some advanced farm i have seen they are uh, warming uh they are warming water for their cows you too can do it yeah that is but that is during the cold season uh in the hot season uh, they drink a lot of water so uh, water will affect milk production in those ways so when the if it is on cold season and you see the milk drop down you can start giving uh warm water and the cow will uh will be drinking much yeah but the thing is you have to give clean water you have to keep uh, fresh uh, it you must give it uh, keep it fresh yeah yeah then we have number nine uh, we can say stress yeah you have to eliminate the stress of a cow by all means possible so we have different types of uh, stress like we well, we have heat heat stress so uh, i have seen many people many farmers are advancing and some are building their cow shed like a house yeah without proper ventilation yeah you see where the cows live uh we have uh we have iron sheet but uh it's like the cow can touch the, the iron sheet so they generate a lot of heat yeah if you know what i mean about iron sheet and uh cow may be affected by that yeah uh another thing is stress ca can be brought by other animals so what you are supposed to do is uh, if there is congestion of animals they are absolutely there will be milk the milk production will go down because these are cows and uh, you are supposed to to have uh, uh, each cow must have enough space for walking some cows are very prayerful they need to pray so you need to create a good space yeah the work the walking area the yeah there must be good space there are you animals should not be congested yeah and i believe with these little tips that i'm giving you you'll be running uh, one thing or two yeah so another thing is uh, uh, milking intervals so if you decide to to your cow okay but this depends with production if your cow is producing more than 30 liters you should be uh, milking three times in a day 
So if you say like now you be milking at 1 a.m. in the morning, uh, the 9 a.m. in the morning, and uh, at uh, around uh, uh, 3 p.m. If you be consistent on that, remember cows are, are routine animals. They will know this is time for milking. Yeah? And once they do, they will, they are, their hormone will start letting milk down. So you have to be consistent at the time that uh, you are milking. So if you milk twice a day, be, be accurate on the time. If it is 5 in the morning and 5 in the evening, you must be consistent on that. Yeah? Cows are routine animals. So that there is no other way I can tell you about that. You have to be consistent. Yeah? Uh, you have to be consistent on that. Yeah? And if it is a heifer and you want to, uh, it to produce more, uh, to have it to have more production, what you should do is uh, you start milking like three times in a day. And after each milking, you give concentrate and you give quality fodder. When you do, once you do that, you will uh, you will increase your milk production. Hey, eh, George? You increase the milk production. So that's another thing. Then you have to... Uh, what about workers? Yeah? Workers. You don't have to keep on changing your employees. Because once you do, cow needs consistency, as I was saying. Stop ch keep on changing employees. Today you have this one. Uh, tomorrow you have another one. No, don't do that. You have a, a heifer there. One heifer. So you have to be very keen uh, with your employee. Relate with them well. Uh, and I did a video on how to manage your employees. I'll put it in the description below. Watch it. And you will learn one or two things. So... Uh, to summing up all those factors, there are other more factors, but I have given you the main ones. Yeah. So as a good dairy farmer, you should adhere to that. You should uh, observe those precautions that I have shown you, I have told you, and uh, with proper management, with proper cow management, with uh, proper feeding regime, uh, with quality fodder. That is. You just you don't just feed fodder, you feed quality fodder, and uh, I believe your cow production will, will will go higher. Yeah, your cow production will go higher. It's possible. It's doable. I've done it. You too can do it. Others have done it. You too can do it. If uh, these large-scale farmers uh, spend their time and uh, dedicate their time to tell other farmers on this, you'll be amazed by the simple, simple tips, uh, simple tricks that they did for their milk production. So, watch out. Genetics, uh, proper management, fodder, avoid stress. And uh, I believe you will go far as a dairy farmer. So keep on working. Keep on layering animals. Don't give up because at the end of the day, you are living your dream. Uh, you are passionate about it. And we all can do it. Yeah. So for those who have not subscribed, please do support me by subscribing. Let me reach 1,000 subscribers, comment, like, share, and I'll be glad for that support. I'm not asking for much, just subscription. Press that like button, press that uh, subscription button, click, click that bell icon so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So I want to thank you all for your time up to this far, and I believe we will go far. So may you have a wonderful day and take care.